You lying, cheating, no good son of a bitch. Perhaps we've come at a bad time. Oh, don't be foolish, dearies. Please, sit. Fancy something to eat? A drink, perhaps? Or is it a bed you require? We've already let rooms here. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> of course. Masters Lee and Kenway, uh, was it? Uh, I'll have your bags brought up. Uh. Do you require anything further? Only privacy. This way! Sir, William Johnson. A pleasure. A good lad, if a bit earnest. I'm told you're putting together an expedition. We believe there's a precursor site in the region. I require your knowledge of the land and its people to find it. Sadly, my research has been stolen. Without it, I'm of no use to you. Then we'll find it. Do you have any leads? My associate, Thomas Hickey, has been making the rounds. He's quite good at loosening tongues. Well, tell me where I can find him. I'll see if I can't speed things up. We've heard rumors of bandits operating from a compound southwest of here. You'll likely find him there. Charles? Sir. We'd best be off. Of course. Tell me about yourself, William. What's to tell? I was born in Ireland to Catholic parents, which I learned early in life severely limited my opportunities. So I converted to Protestantism and journeyed here at the behest of my uncle. But I fear my uncle Peter was not the swiftest of men. He sought to open trade with the Kanyan Gahaga, but chose to build his settlement away from the trade routes instead of on them. I tried to reason with the man, but... <sighs> As I said, not the swiftest. So, I took what little money I'd earned and bought my own little plot of land. I built a home, a farm, a store, and a mill. Humble beginnings, but well situated, which made all the difference. So this is how you came to know the Mohawk? Indeed. And it has proved a valuable relationship. With still no mention from your contacts of the Precursor site? No hidden temple or ancient constructs? Yes and no. Which is to say, they had their fair share of sacred sites. Earthen moans, forest clearings, hidden caves, but nothing matching what you describe. No strange metals, no odd glows. Hmm. It is well hidden. Even to them, it seems. But cheer up, my friend. You'll have your precursor treasure. I swear it. To our success, then. And soon. Thomas Hickey? Who's asking? Haytham Kenway. Is that supposed to mean something? Show some respect, boy. Peace, Charles. William Johnson sent us in the hopes we might expedite your search. But don't need no expediting. Don't need none of your fancy London speak, neither. I found the men that done the theft. Then why are you just lazing around? 
figuring out how to deal with those varlets. I have an idea. Well, let's hear it. I'll kill the lookout, take up a position behind the guards. Uh, you two approach from the front. When I open fire on the group, you charge in. We'll have the element of surprise on our side. Half will fall before they've even realized what's happened. Get into position. But wait for me to take the first shot. We'll be safe inside! What now? We can blow the door with those. Go on, shoot them. <laughs> on with your show, then. Guess they wasn't so safe inside after all. Save your looting for after we found Johnson's research. Yes, master. Lay down your weapons, and I'll consider letting you live. I make you the same offer. We've no quarrel. I only wish to return this chest to its rightful owner. Nothing rightful about Mr. Johnson. I won't ask again. Agreed. Your kind is no need for books and maps. Who put you up to this? Never seen a person. It's always been dead drops and letters. But they always pay, so we do the jobs. Well, those days are done. Tell your masters I said as much. <clears throat> Who should I say you are? You don't. They'll know. Hey, Fum. This one's got some shot on him. You might want to be grabbing it on account of your pistol being parched. A shame so many had to die. Aye. Terrible tragedy, that. Back to the Green Dragon, then. I need a drink. Careful, gents. We've company. Don't let go of the chest, Charles. We'll take care of this round. Wait. 
them bodies is sure to have loot on them, it would be a shame to let it all go to waste. Are you mad? In case you've forgotten, we're in the midst of something. Aw, why has you always got to go and spoil the sport? with knives, they ain't so tough. It's not the scoundrels I'm concerned with. to double my pay after all this if he expects me to keep at his side. There you are. My thanks, Master Kenway. No. Tell me what it is you'll need. The images on this amulet, are they familiar to you? Perhaps one of the tribes has shown you something similar. It appears Kanyan Gahaga in origin. Can you trace it to a specific location? I need to know where it came from. With my research returned, perhaps. Let me see what I can do. Thomas! What? Rent yourself a room. And a bath as well. I suspect we'll be here for a while. Should not be much longer. I'll let you know as soon as I have something.
Hello again. More almanac pages? Well, not quite. It's a treatise, actually. Oh? Concerning what? The benefits of taking an older woman as a lover. Really? This I'd like to hear. First and most obvious, they're wiser. And so this makes for far more stimulating conversation. Makes other things more stimulating as well, but more on that in a moment. All right. Your argument for experience makes some sense. Second, when beauty fades, women must improve their utility, lest they be discarded and forgotten. Rare is an old woman who is not also kind, compassionate, and good. That's something of a generalization. But also true. Now, on to the third. Older women cannot conceive, which means one less thing over which to fret. In fact, you also decrease the chance of acquiring something like the French pox, its presence clearly visible, or the woman dead. And should one desire a child? Then make a young woman your wife. Let the older one be a mistress. And that brings me to my fourth point. With age comes prudence. An older woman is less likely to reveal your indiscretions. Yes. I suppose you know quite a bit about that. And proud of it, thank you. As to the fifth reason, because in every animal that walks upright, the deficiency of the fluids that fill the muscles appears first in the highest part. The face first grows lank and wrinkled, then the neck, then the breast and arms. The lower parts continuing to the last as plump as ever, so that covering all above with a basket and regarding only what is below the girdle, it is impossible of two women to know an old from a young one. And as in the dark all cats are gray, the pleasure of corporal enjoyment with an old woman is at least equal and frequently superior, every knack being by practice capable of improvement. You mad bastard. Well, it's true, and believe me, I should know. I've sampled a great many. You should try one as well. Like a fine wine, they only improve with age. Although I suppose if left unattended too long, some of a tendency to sour. And that, my friend, is a most unpleasant experience. Better to work in a field often plowed, you know? Is there more? Indeed, indeed. The sixth is this. The sin is less. To take a maiden head is a great responsibility. Mishandled, it can ruin lives. No such risk with an older woman. And this implies the seventh. Younger women are more given to compunction. Anxiety and unease are not present in the more aged and experienced. And as to the last of my reasons, well, it's really quite simple. Older women are so very grateful for the attention. You make a compelling argument, Mr. Franklin. I might just have to run a few tests myself. I highly recommend it. I owe you a great thanks, by the way. What for? Speaking with me. You see, I have very few friends in Boston these days. And what did you do to earn their ire? Started with a cartoon I drew, suggesting unification. How else can we hope to withstand the French menace? I proposed something similar at the Albany Conference as well, and it ruffled quite a few feathers. See, I've begun to wonder if Parliament best serves our interests. The colonies might be better off independent and autonomous. Most of my peers, however, haven't taken kindly to the suggestion. Are things truly so bad under the Crown? But you've answered your own question. Under. Why under? It should be side by side. Does France reside beneath Britain? Do the Italians? The Prussians? The Spanish? No. Oh, sure, they may disagree from time to time, even come to blows, but they stand on equal ground. And we should as well. Are the colonies not simply an extension of the kingdom, though? Another borough, if you will? No, we are not. We've evolved into something else, something distinct. 
Hmm. I suppose it's only natural to desire parity. We leave behind our parents, our childhoods, our homes, and seek to find a place in the world. If it's true for a person, why not a nation? Yes, yes, exactly. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. Please, don't let me keep you from your work. Sorry, but I've some work needs doing. The Boston Gazette, your best source for news. You have my everlasting gratitude, sir. <laughs>
Good evening, gentlemen. Charming. Oh, peace, Charles. He'll grow on you. Oi! Catherine, you fussock! Get back here! Daddy needs a drink. How fares the search? Maths and maps are not cutting it. What of your local contacts? We'll need to earn their trust before they'll share what they know. <clears throat> I have an idea on how we might be affecting that. There's a man who's taken to enslaving natives. Rescue them, and they'll owe us. <laughs> Do you know where they're being held? Afraid not. Benjamin Churchwill. He's a finder and a fixer. He's also on your list. And there I was, wondering whom I might solicit next. Well done. Any news? Whispers of things. Nothing solid at the moment. I know you're looking for word of anything out of the ordinary. Dealing with temples and spirits and ancient times and whatnot. But, so far, can't say my boys have heard much. No trinkets or artifacts being moved through your... shadow market? Nothing new. Couple of ill-gotten weapons, some jewellery likely lifted from a living thing. But you said to listen for talk of glows and ums and strange sights, right? And I ain't heard nothing about that. Keep at it. Oh, I will. You done me a great service, mister. And I fully intend to repay my debt, thrice-fold if it pleases. 
Thank you, Thomas. Place to sleep and meal to eat is thanks enough. Don't you worry. I'll get you sorted soon. When I know something, you'll know something. Do you like it here, Charles? There's a certain charm to Boston, I suppose. To all of the colonies, really. Granted, their cities have none of London's sophistication or splendor, but the people are earnest and hardworking. They've a pioneer spirit I find compelling. It's quite something, really, watching a place that's finally found its feet. Has it, though? The French still wage war from up north, and I fear the Spanish have designs upon this place as well. Is this a new world, or just another battlefield? Ah, that's a story old as time itself and one that's not like to change. We're cruel and desperate creatures, set in our conquering ways. The Saxons and the Franks, the Ottomans and Safavids. I could go on for hours. The whole of human history is but a series of conflicts and subjugations, a desire for more and more and more. I pray one day we rise above it. Whilst you pray, I'll act. We'll see who finds success first, hmm? It was an expression. Aye, and a dangerous one. Words have power. Wield them wisely. I've some work I should finish. Let us speak later. This business with Silas confuses me. If Britain stands any chance of pushing back the French, they must ally with the natives, not enslave them. Silas is loyal only to his purse. That his actions harm the crown is irrelevant. So long as there are buyers for his product, he'll continue to procure it. All the more reason to stop him, then. My days are spent in Congress with the locals, attempting to convince them that we're the ones they should trust, that the French are merely using them as tools to be abandoned once they've won. Your words must lose their strength when held against the reality of Silas' actions. I've tried to explain that he does not represent us. But he wears the red coat. He commands a fort. I must appear to them either a liar or a fool. Likely both. Take heart, brother. When we deliver them his head, they'll know your words were true. Seems like we're not the only ones looking for Mr. Church. Damn it, he could be anywhere. What do we do? We find him. Come. I'll show you how. do you think? Not our business to meddle, even if we've the best of intentions. But if you could have seen it, they were surely drunk carrying on like that, and during the day, no less. Thompson's Brook Avenue Maltings and Hop Distribution. A wider selection of brewery services than any other monster in the city. What scandalous behavior from one who aims to be a surgeon. 
Not likely, if he keeps up such carousing. Truly a shameful display. Benjamin's parents would be mortified. Perhaps I should send someone to retrieve him before he damages his reputation beyond repair. They stumbled off to the northeast, no doubt in search of a tavern or some other place of ill repute. Start questioning those on the street. I'm headed for higher ground. to take a listen. With luck, one of those people knows what became of Benjamin. The Boston Titan Tax Collector has been sanctioned for failing to collect taxes. Plead ignorance. Bugger that! They're lying! Aye. Well, what can I do? Threats light off them, and I'll not deign to grovel. Actions speak louder than words, my friend. Arrest one and put him in stocks. See if he's so glib then. To do so without cause will set them singing songs about us. Last thing the city needs is town criers complaining about our abuse of authority. Then forget it. The crime is done. The killer's gone. Those who know won't share their secrets. If the city wishes to harbor scoundrels, let them pay the price for it. or another to death. You don't envy the man. He's green times ahead. Well, what do you think they're planning? All I know is it can't be good. Probably looking for a nice, quiet place to do the deed. From what I hear tell, his work usually involves quite a bit of screaming. Which reminds me, we'd best not buy any meat to <laughs> Good call, that. all under control. How odd. Did they say what had happened? No. Only that it was a trifling matter, and he'd be returned home soon. There was some blood, though, so I wonder if it wasn't more serious than they let on. Where were they taking him? Towards the hilltop. Perhaps there's a doctor at the fort.
See, Charles? We'll have church in no time, just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir, where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you are raised in the manner that I was. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world in a different way. Careful. The place is well guarded. We need to slip past them. Find the key. Wait here. Well then. Why must you always make these things so difficult, Benjamin? Merely provide me with recompense, and all shall be forgiven. I'll not pay for protection I don't need. Clearly, you do require protection. Else we wouldn't be here. How very good. Now, what shall we do about our guest? Maybe I'll take his hands. Put an end to his surgery. Maybe I'll take his tongue. Put an end to his waggling. Or maybe I'll take his cock. Put an end to his fucking us. So many options. I can't possibly decide. Take all three. Now, hold a moment. Perhaps I was hasty in refusing you earlier. I'm so very sorry, Benjamin. But that door has closed. Be reasonable, Silas! I rather think I was. But you took advantage of my oh. generosity. I won't be made a fool a second time. I fear I lack the constitution to bear witness to such barbarism. Come find me when you're finished, Cutter. You'll regret this, Silas, do you hear me? I'll have your head! No. I rather think you won't. A little bit from here, a little bit from there. Make myself a nice keepsake, I will. You are absolutely mad. Just like all good artists. Your parents must be so very proud to have raised a specimen like yourself. Quiet now. I need to concentrate on me work. You're a ruffian. Commoner's dirt cutter. I'm proud of it. Maybe you'll get lucky and pass out. Though I dare say I'll do me best to ensure that doesn't happen. Hold still a minute. I gotta decide where to start. Just a quick little swipe and no more ears. Who? 
Who are you? Haytham Kenway, at your service. I... I don't understand. Why are you here? Uh, walk with me, Mr. Church, and all will be explained.
you, sir.